One of the things that I think is really important to note around this incoming administration, because there's been a lot of controversy, there's been a lot of conflict, especially within the evangelical community in general, and, and more specifically within the, you know, my own community of, you know, non-denominational Protestant Christian. It's interesting because there's been a lot of, there's been a lot of divide around who to vote for, if, if you should vote, all of those things. But I think now that we know what the result is and the result was overwhelmingly the case, as Christians, we need to be praying for this administration. We need to be praying for these candidates being nominated for cabinet. We need to be praying for these leaders that they have discernment, that they have wisdom, that they have a desire to lead with righteousness. We've got to be praying for them, not being cynical. The cynicism, y'all, I'm going to rant for a hot second. The cynicism drives me crazy. Um, if, if you are responding to everything that's going on in the world with a cynical perspective on all things, then that really, there's no gratitude. There's no contentment. There's no thankfulness in that attitude for the things that we are spared from, the opportunities that we have, regardless of who the president was going to be, the opportunities that we always have to show love, to show thoughtfulness and care, to speak truth into people's lives. That truth, of course, coming from the word of God, to speak the whole truth and nothing but the truth, to stand up for righteousness in our land. Like we always had those opportunities, regardless of who the president was going to be. And now we may just have some bigger opportunities or less oppressive opportunities to be able to do that as Christians. And I'm excited about that. I'm excited about some of these nominations that I'm seeing because these are really good men who have fantastic character. Not, I'm not speaking for all of them, but for the ones that I know and have uh, been following and hearing a lot of their their comments on a variety of things before they ever thought they were being nominated for anything, before they had anything to prove, these people have been showing incredible leadership and I'm excited to see them being nominated. People like Mike Huckabee, people like Pete um, and, and many more. It's exciting to see some of these people step up and be a part of an administration. And I, regardless of the differences of opinions there are on particular things with some of these people, I'm praying for them and I'm praying for our president. Uh, and I'm praying for the transition from our current president to our next president and praying for their administration and the transition. And if, you know, one of the things that was really humbling early on with the whole Kamala, Donald Trump issue, just like the comparison between the two, one of the things early on was thinking, man, like, are we leaving room for the possibility that Kamala could get saved? Are we leaving the possibility on the table that some of these people that we find incredibly frustrating to watch in power in our country, that they could actually change, that their heart could be changed, that their mind could be changed on things? Or are we sort of just canceling them out and making fun of them from this perspective of who they are as a person and not their skill, right? Obviously, we got to point out this, the 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 stupid stuff around like, why are you in this position if you can't do the job, right? That's I get that. Um, but are we leaving room for the possibility that these people could actually have a change of heart and a change of mind? That's a humbling thing to think about as we're praying for our country and we're praying for how the Lord will use us, how God will use us to do his will, to be faithful to the mission that we have. And I think that that's, it's a huge thing I'm going to talk about whenever I talk about the political landscape or social economic issues is Christians should be the ones that are deeply engaged, not because we have fear or we need to control, but because we have the freedom to love and serve people. And that should be the forefront of our mind as we are caring for our communities, as we're taking care of our, you know, our people and taking care of our country and caring about the economy and the border, you know, like all of these things, they obviously come back to caring for people and Christians should be 
some of the first because we're free to. We have nothing to lose. Why would we not serve people? Why would we not care for people? And I think that that's pretty huge for us to have that mentality um, and be out there and be active. So there's my my take on what we can what we can take away from what's going on in the world. Pray, pray, and pray some more, and really ask the Lord how you can be involved how you can be a part of what he is doing in our country and praying for a revival, praying for the opportunities for doors to be opened for the gospel. I mean, man, like pray for it and have the confidence to know that the person, like the being, the God of the universe that you're asking can absolutely do even more than you ask. If you liked this video and you want more, you're in luck. This is one small segment to a show I do every single Friday here on the channel at 3.30 p.m. EST. You can watch the full version of this episode over here on the screen, or you can subscribe to the full channel and get notifications of every Friday show, the segments that come out during the week, as well as podcasts and other topical content that we put out here just for you on the channel, free of access, so that you can engage with really relevant topics and really relevant things that are happening in the world from a biblical perspective. Would love to see you join the community here on the channel.